Hey everybody, it's the Mad Master once again, and I am doing another video about the band Manowar. Now, I didn't really write this one out, but it's uh, something I thought long and hard about as far as what I think really happened to the band over the years and why they frankly haven't had the level of success that they should have. And just reading interviews and just, you know, seeing what has happened with the band over the last, you know, nearly, well, I mean, I don't know, it's been more than 35 years, not 40 years, but it's been uh, quite a journey with Manowar, and I've only been part of it for, you know, maybe half of that, but I am a fan, and I've been so for a long time now. With regards to their final tour, it's uh, something that you know I may see if it was uh, if it was the right price ticket. But last time I saw it, saw a Man of War, which was the only time I saw them, and the tickets were very expensive, especially for the amount of music that you got. I think what happened to Man of War and why they aren't as respected as they should be is basically boils down to a couple of factors. So Man of War always had this kind of adversarial attitude towards the music scene in general, record labels and other bands. But sometimes I think part of that was in actuality, not even not it was overplayed because I think it was actually them covering for their own flaws and faults as business people and so forth. Uh, take the uh fact that you know the first hell on earth video where joey DeMaio, or was it joey DeMaio, i don't think it was the video it was uh it was an interview i read once in the 90s from joey DeMaio, and he said well we've been on 17 or i don't know if it was eric adams 17 record labels i'm just like well is that a good thing to be on 17 record labels i mean there's got to be more to the story than that but it's like they're framing it as they're so uh true to their metal that they had to like be dropped by 17 record labels in their career. So that was kind of a dumb thing to say. If you really think about it at the time, you know, of course I was like, wow, that's really cool. You know, 17 record labels. Damn, that's awesome. So that was in the nineties, which was a very weird time for metal to be honest. And Manowar had come out with louder than hell, which Definitely stuck to their guns in a certain way, even though if it was a kind of a watered down version of sort of watered down kind of a lot of this kind of style of battle hymns, but for modern day, um, without like more of the epic songs to some extent. So that's one factor to look into is uh, you know the fact that they were kind of proud. And then there was uh of of being dropped by labels. And then there was the other thing that uh, came out of it was probably about 10 years ago where there was this blog site where they was like, this is where Manowar really live. You know, this is how they really live. They, you know, have to live in this kind of house this is where Eric Adams lived. It was kind of fucked up. I mean, it was called lifestyles and the rich and something. It was a joke on the lifestyles and rich and famous. And, uh, there's a, if you look it up, you can, you can see that, you know, maybe perhaps Manowar didn't really achieve the riches that say Metallica did. So they spend a lot of their money on, you know, pushing the product out rather than actually having a profit, running a profit. So in regards to the, the uh, Carl Logan situation, it's really a long line of disappointments and terrible things to befall the band in the last 10, 15 years. And I think basically they had the chance to really take like a country like America by storm in the 80s. Now, I've heard a lot of stuff, and this is just hearsay, about how they really were in the 80s and they had this weird attitude, like touring with bands like they were better and they were, you know, they were the superior band. And I don't know, you know, how to know how much of this could be, could be uh, uh, actually documented or, uh, verified i don't know how much of it could be verified but 
I think the basic premise is, is that Manowar had this weird, arrogant attitude that sometimes served the style of music they were doing, but at the same time, it kind of alienated them. I don't think that really was in the beginning, though, because I think that Manowar, in the beginning, definitely had connections to other bands. They were a little bit more amicable with the metal scene in general. For example, Ross the Boss, the guitarist, uh, the former guitarist, of course, uh, he actually produced one of Anthrax's early releases. And you know, there was there was some intermingling between Manowar and other bands. Now, people would laugh at the loincloths and all that, but I don't think early on that really was the case. I think the attitude developed over time. Now, Manowar would always excuse it or try to frame it as they were wanting to do what they want to do. And to some extent, that's true, but I think that they had this attitude. And I read a lot of stuff in the 90s about bands that would appear with them and they were just totally unreasonable with the band that would open or whatever. And this is all speculation, so I can't really back this up. But I think basically that really alienated their possible American audience that could look past some of the really cheesy, wild kind of shit that they were into. So that's another factor. I think another factor of why Manowar really didn't make it in the, in the States is just because they just didn't tour enough in the States. I mean... They're like, well, fuck you then. You, We won't play your place. Or we'll just play in Europe all the time or wherever. You know, it's just like they could have they could have had these small scale tours. And I just got to mention that someone like Ross the Boss now, however many uh, weird arguments I've had with him about politics online in the last week or so, um, he actually does you know, does these tours and does this, these plays clubs, you know, or wherever. And he plays with other bands and other musicians. He's very like out in the scene. And I think Manowar isolated themselves, the actual, you know, the original band. I think they, they started to isolate themselves and just get into their insular trap of this is Manowar. And blah, blah, blah. So, and you know, you can put the blame on specific members, obviously, but that's really, I think why, Man of War kind of just kind of went up their own ass and you know these albums that they're recording you know getting worse and worse in some ways I did like uh God, what is it uh got the gods of war was it I did like that album and I liked the previous one warriors of the world I did not like the lord of steel though I just thought it was kind of a it was missing some magic there and it just it and then the fact that they these production, these weird production choices that they made with that last one. It, it's like they released two different versions of the same album. One of them actually sounded pretty good, but the only one that sounded really good in a certain way was the one available in their ma in this magazine, Metal Hammer UK, or uh, Germany or some shit. They only released the album as a limited edition. And then the retail one that you can buy from their website or whatever, or download or whatever, that one sounded like a fucking AM radio with the less, less treble and you know, it just sounded weird. So it's kind of like Metallica with their weird production choices with that in particular, that album. So I think that really killed them too. I mean, I think they just kind of played this thing over and over again, this, this theme, and they didn't really try to expand in a certain way. At least... Even if the music doesn't expand, expand your horizons and play with different bands. You know, don't ask for unreasonable things from the club just because you're super loud. And I know that that's part of it, but it's, and it's cool, but it's like, it's just ridiculous. So I think that's what happened with Manowar. And then the Scott Columbus dying, really, I think that was a really big blow to the band and their morale and their fan base in a certain way, because it was like, something wasn't right when he left and we don't know, but it just seems like that was part of their, they were just kind of just, I don't know. But, um, another thing about man of war too, with regards to what happened with, uh, the Lord of steel album was the fact that they recorded a full album that's unreleased to this day based on this fantasy novel that they worked on with this fantasy writer from Germany. And it's like, Oh, what happened to that? Oh, we just, and then their interview with, uh, 
with Scott or not Scott uh, with Joy DeMaio was like, well, we just scrapped that shit. Oh, we're just doing an album. It's going to tear your balls off. Ugh! And it's like, what happened? You know, and, you know, a lot of these things that these bands or these musicians say, it's like, are they really telling the truth or did something fall through on the deal that they had with the guy or whatever? So a lot of what Manowar has experienced is it's just, it's this fucking charade with their fan base and people. And they're trying to, they're trying to project this image, but it just, it, it jumped the shark. And that's why Manowar is not respected in the scene as much as they should be. And early on, I mean, those first four, or, you know, four to six albums that they did were fucking legendary. And people, you know, people from bands, from thrash bands or black metal bands or Viking metal bands particularly, really love those albums. I mean, I know that Corthon from Bathory was really influenced by the early Man of War. You could just hear it. And he kind of went back and forth on admitting it, but he definitely was influenced just as much as Venom. So that's what I got to say about Man of War. Uh, I wish them the best. I would love to see one final show. I wish that they would have reunited with Ross the Boss. And I wish they would have, or David Shankle even. But, you know, they, whatever is going on with them, I just, it's just so sketchy and weird. And just all these little business screw ups. And, you know, and that's why I'm calling this video The Fall of Man War. Because I just think it's just something that, it's sad that, and that, not to mention the fucking Carl Logan shit, of course. And I should mention that as just like another thing that just was like sketchy and weird about Manowar that just fucking like ruined them. And it's terrible. And I just don't, I just don't understand how things could get that bad with that situation. But that's why Manowar is not as respected. It's not because of loincloths. It's not because of the cheesy songs or the song titles. It's because they fucking just, you know, they just, something wasn't right, you know, for a long time. And I think that's why, I think Ross the Boss left as things were getting weird. This is going to sound like a weird speculation. Things were getting weird with Joy DeMaio and, and just the band in general. And I think when he left, I think that's when they started really going down this rabbit hole. And that's why they weren't as, they you know, they weren't with the other metal bands in the 90s and the 2000s as much. You know, they I know that Joey DeMaio produced or helped out Rhapsody, Rhapsody of Fire, whatever you want to call them, Rhapsody, and some other bands, you know, and he was kind of kind of getting more into the scene for a while. And then there's these lawsuits with the bands and shit. It's just like, oh, God damn it. So they're still one of my favorite bands. I'm not going to stop listening to Manowar and even Carl Logan Manowar, sorry, but I my fucking tax dollars go to drone strikes and shit, you know, my all sorts of stuff, political stuff, you know, you can say, Oh, you shouldn't listen to him with, a, uh, with Carl Logan being part of the band. It's like R. Kelly or something. Well, Carl Logan really didn't write a lot of songs. He wasn't really, he was kind of just a hired gun in many ways. So whatever, I'm going to listen to Manowar. I'm going to still fucking hold them great as a great band. But yeah, they did, did jump the shark. And I think, Something's wrong, something happened, and that's why they fell. 